this is going to be interesting because obviously no Jordan Love. If Jordan Love was in, it'd be, you know, a little bit more of two of the good young quarterbacks in the game. I guess maybe I'm sliding Malik Willis here. I don't know if you're predicting the big time Malik Willis game because it looks like Malik Willis is now going to start uh, in Jordan Love's place. But w- what's the matchup that matters here? Does it involve Malik Willis? Are you going somewhere else? What do you think about this game? Yeah, no, I'm going to go somewhere else. Uh, I, my plus factor will have a little bit to do with Malik Willis, obviously. Okay, but right, we'll get there. We'll get there. That's a good teaser. We'll good get teaser. there. Good teaser. Green Bay secondary against these Colts wide receivers, just given the potential of Anthony Richardson, who attempted not one, but two yard, two passes of over 50 yards when the rest of the league, oh, there was only one other person that even attempted one, and it was C.J. Stroud. So it's, and it was in the same I mean, game. Wait, and it was in the same game. Wait, like, we saw... Just the most incredible display from Anthony Richardson. He's obviously the biggest question mark for the Colts this season. The first outing uh, was very, very encouraging. And then you contrast that with the Packers in week one. Now, I want to preface this by saying I'm not gleaning too much, especially off of one off of one game, but especially off of a game where the playing surface was not good. We saw these guys slipping and sliding absolutely everywhere. I'm not going to hold it against most of these players for not playing up to the level that we think that they're capable of. For instance, after one week, Jair Alexander is the 125th ranked player that has played on the outside. Not great. He allowed a 66.7 completion percentage when targeted, and he allowed four receptions in six targets. That's not good for your number one corner, and who previously was the highest paid corner in the league. I don't expect that to keep up, hopefully. You also have Eric Stokes back, and he did really he did decently well too. Again, I'm I'm just not going to glean too much off of one game, but they had a 28th ranked coverage grade in week one, so it was not good. And when Anthony Richardson can clearly nail, especially on those long plays, so it just I, it makes me a little bit concerned because he is going to isolate and and attack those outside corners in particular, and you need to be buttoned up if you're Green Bay, and now that you're back on solid ground, literally. No, no, there's no doubt about it. I mean, when I went back and I watched Richardson's film from last week, obviously you marvel at the incredible 50-yard throws. There's no doubt about it. But, you know, there were throws that he left out there. You know, there Mm -hmm. were some inconsistencies to his game, but there were also just some absolute rippers over the middle where, I I mean – Texas defenders are close to where the ball is. And if he doesn't have the tier one arm strength that he does, that ball is not getting completed. But in fact, it did because he does. And I think for the Packers defense, you always have to be very, very ready for that. This guy can make a throw that very few other quarterbacks can make. Um, And you just got to not let it burn you. Uh, more often than not when you're playing a guy like Anthony Richardson. So I think that's a really good call out there. I am going to talk about my Malik Willis for my matchup that matters. And it's specifically because Juju Brents, the outside corner for the Indianapolis Colts, goes on IR. They were already thin at outside corner. Like Juju Brents was the main guy that I think they looked at and said, okay, you've got to be CB1 on the outside for us this season. He is now hurt. He is now on IR. Kenny Moore is good as their slot defender, but there are still way more question marks now with their outside corners. I think it's Dallas Flowers, it's Jalen Jones, it's Samuel Womack. Like, it's guys that still really have to prove themselves. So, for Willis, who has never finished a game in which he has played more than 10 snaps with a passing grade above 50, this is kind of a right matchup here. You're at home. you got a plethora of wide receivers to throw to. Like, you've had you've had an extra two days, one day, whatever it is technically, to be able to prepare for something like this. This is a game where he should play relatively well if he is capable of doing so. And just to sort of marry that with my plus factor, Jaden Reed has to once again, I think, be the plus factor for this team because, you know, he was a major player in the game against the Philadelphia Eagles. He played very, very well. And I think the depth of the receiving options that Green Bay has is great. But in particular, Jaden Reed had 68 yards after the catch against Philadelphia. That's sort of the situations that you want to put him in, right? Malik doesn't have to throw it 50 yards down the field to go get 50 yards. Sometimes you only got to go throw it five, and then Jaden Reed will take it the other 45. So I think that this week, even more than last week, 
they need to lean on Jaden Reed because I feel like he could be the type of player to get Malik Willis warmed up a little bit so that he can really start to attack those outside corners, especially when we get into the second half and when it's winning time for one of these teams. And so, yeah, I think that it it is... Packers fans should be cautiously optimistic about what Malik Willis can do in this game because I think it's a good matchup for it, even though I think a lot of people would look at this team and say, hey, major downgrade from Jordan Love. That doesn't necessarily mean that this game in particular is going to look ugly. It could look a lot better than people think for the Packers. But um, you mentioned that you were going to you were kind of hinting at a Malik Willis type of call out for your plus factor. So who you got? Um, so it's interesting because if you look at the Green Bay offense in the first 10 weeks of last season, the playbook was very, very conservative. It was short passes because you do have receivers that can get the yards after the catch. It was leaning on the run game as Jordan Love kind of got going, and sometimes even to the detriment of the Green Bay offense because the run game wasn't really being as productive as you wanted it to be mm-hmm. for injury or otherwise. You have Josh Jacobs now. He is my plus factor. Because he is someone that this offense can rely on to move the ball. Now, he had five rushes last week that gained 10 or more yards. So that's a first down right there from Josh Jacobs to be able to move you down the field. That ranked third in the league last, last week. So I'm very much expecting that this offense now, especially with Emmanuel Wilson kind of coming on too in the backfield, where you still yeah. kind of have that rotation, even though A.J. Dillon went down, I'm expecting this to be kind of a run first offense because Malik Willis is a really good runner too. And making the defense kind of contend with all three of those guys is pretty tricky. That's it's not what defenses are built to do anymore. Mm -hmm. So I really expect this playbook to kind of where it opened up after week 10 last year with Jordan Love and his plethora of receivers. I'm expecting it to like shrink back down to what we saw early on uh, in the season last year for Green Bay as you know, Matt LaFleur tries to get Malik Willis comfortable in this offense. Keep in mind, Malik Willis did not come into the Green Bay Packers. He did not spend preseason with the Green Bay Packers. Right. So he is still very much trying to learn. And I think that basically Matt LaFleur is going to pull it all back and make it very, very basic and really try to lean on this run game a little bit more to move the ball down the field. And then hopefully Jeff Hoffley's defense can continue what they started last last week, which was, oh, hey, we have Xavier McKinney now. We're just going to go out and intercept the ball, and we're going to stop you in your tracks. That's going. They're going to lean heavily on the defense, too, I think, as well. So it's going to be very interesting to see what this offense looks like because I do think it's going to look drastically different than what we thought we were going to see with Jordan Love. 